Good morning. What's happening, guys? We're back again with the Zoe ZT702S. This is the combination multimeter and scope. In the last video, we looked at the multimeter functions of this, you know, standard size uh, meter. All right, we looked at the oscilloscope functions. Today, we are going to look at the multimeter functions. And to get from the oscilloscope side to the multimeter side, we just press this here mode button. So let me get everything set up and we'll get back into it. All right, I am grabbing our probe master, gold plated probes. These are the same set of probes I test every single multimeter with. That way we eliminate any problem with probes. One other small piece of housekeeping, uh, I received a complaint the video about the uh, the light show. Uh, I apologize, people with photo sensitivity. Here's your warning: this is an electronics channel that deals a considerable amount with LEDs, which is what you see there. So you're going to see more of this. All right, let's get this guy up in place here, and we're going to start out. I can't I don't have much room to get over here, but uh. This is my uh, AD584M voltage standard. We're going to start out the low end at 2.5 volts. I mean, what can you say about that? Very nice. I like the uh, pseudo analog graph. Go up to 5 volts, which is fine. Seven and a half. Good. And 10 volts. Okay, so what I see through this whole thing is a very, very small error in the tenth of a volt. I'm not even going to worry about it. All right, so now I'm going to put these little mini grabbers on here. And we're going to take a look at some resistances. So we need to go here. Okay, so now we're on resistance. So what? So maybe maybe I can help you see it better. There we go. So this is one, ten ohms, hundred ohms. I think this is a meg. No, hundred thousand. I don't know. We'll find out on our way up, huh? So let's start. One. Actually, I'm going to take these grabbers off. They're just slowing me down. They're very useful in dealing with ICs and stuff. I'm just being lazy there. All right. Next up, this should be the 10. Good. 100. Okay, that's a bit off. Let's uh, make sure I actually grab the 100. Because you just never know. I may have put it in the wrong drawer. So it's not 100. It's 178. And that was reading 179. So, yeah. I'm perfectly happy with that. Next up on our list. Yeah, there's 100K. It should be, I think, 1 meg. <laughs> pardon me. Oh, pardon my coughing. I'm very sorry. It has been wet and rainy, and the leaves and the pollen, and oh, holy cow. If you've got allergies, Ohio is not a great place to be in the spring. Whew. All right, so this should be one meg. Yep. And this one should be 10 megs. Okay. Let's do this again now. Let's go to uh, 
Oh, wrong button. Here's our continuity. Not super fast, but never in my life have I needed instantaneous continuity readings. Diode check. Okay. So, let's start. I have some LEDs down here. We'll start with the red. It should light it. And it should give us... Yeah, there it's lit. 1.8 is our forward voltage. Now we're going to do the yellow. Same thing, should light it. I thought I put them all in there the right way. Okay, there's yellow. Very dimly lit. I'll put them back in the right way so everything's copacetic. Pardon my blunder, but you know, as I said multiple times when people make their complaints about things I do, there's just me here. I don't have a second set of eyes to uh, check things out. All right, green. Green is lit very nicely. And blue. And blue is lit very nicely. And you see we're at 2.5 volts forward voltage, which means this thing is probably putting out about 3 volts. Okay, now we have capacitor check. I've got a couple of caps here. We have a 22, and this is like a, this is a big one, 680. So let's start with the 22. Good. And the 680. Okay, I forgot we have a 22 nano, I think it's 22 nano. Yeah, great. Great, great, great. All right, let's go back to voltage. DC, let's grab AC voltage. And let's see what we get for today. Oh, knocked my sign over, didn't I? Hang on a second. Can't find the hole. There we go. Why the hell am I only seeing 5 volts AC? There we go. 123.9, and you notice that it has turned red. I know it looks yellow there, but it is red on my screen. Now you can also look here. You can see the max voltage that it has seen is 126.5. Let's, let's zoom in so you can see that better. Yeah. So we've got a maximum voltage of 126.5, minimum voltage, which of course is zero, and our Frequency is 59.97 hertz. I gotta tell you, I really like this thing. Okay, I've added a little bit more light to the situation. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna check current. Go over there to milliamps like that. DC, AC, DC, okay. And for our testing purposes today, we've got one of these nice little 50 ohm, 50 watt power resistors, which I'm going to hook up to the power supply, give it 5 volts. We're going to cap it at 1 amp, but okay, it's on now. Take you over here. You can see at 5 volts, we're pulling just about 
100 milliamps. All right. So now let's hook it up. So, all right. Power out from the power supply goes into the resistor. Out of the resistor, through the multimeter current sense, and back into the power supply. Don't know why that's beeping. Oh, it's overloaded. That says 200 milliamp max. Let's put it on the 10 amp setting. Yeah, so like I said, right around 100 milliamps. So that's kind of strange that the lower current setting did that. But yeah, it looks good. You can see we have a max of 4.1 amps. Our minimum is 0 milliamp, microamps. And our average is 100.2. That's really, really nice. Now we also have this hold save. So now I'm holding it. And if I hold the button, it just saved it to flash memory. How super cool is that? Yeah, this is awesome. All right, so I've got this meter hooked up here. And I'm trying to look for the uh, resistance of this meter. But no matter what I do, this one doesn't read anything. Now, if I swap them around and I put this one here and this one into voltage, well, then you can see the internal resistance of the ETEC City meter is 11.9 mega ohms. So if I switch this up like this and put this one back into voltage mode, well, it's reading a little voltage it's sending out, but it is not... Um, It's not showing me the internal resistance, and it should. Yeah, I don't know why it's not doing that. They're saying it's well over 100 megs, but then, you know. I don't know. Let's try this. You just, just keep getting open loop. That's diode, auto. Well, it thinks it's a uh, 27 nanofarad uh, capacitor, but reads absolutely no resistance. I don't know what to make of that. It doesn't take away anything from the meter. I just don't know what to make of it. Strange. Okay. So it's temperature time. I've got some ice brine in here and some hot water just out of the microwave. Water out of the microwave is 187 degrees. Icy brine. 35, yeah. You think brine would be able to get colder than that? 35. Okay, that's what it is. That's what it is. We will get out the K-type thermocouple. If you are unfamiliar with these devices, they're for measuring temperature, and they're ingenious in their simplicity. In the tip of this are two different types of metal, called bi bimetal. And they react to heat and cold, as anything does, by expanding and contracting at different rates. There we go, temperature. And C. All right, so let's uh, start with our brine. We'll see what happens. So I imagine we get around one, one degree or so. No, it looks like six. Let's see. 
Hey Google, what is 5 degrees Fahrenheit in South Celsius? 5 degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to minus 15 degrees Celsius. Of course, I totally said that backwards. Hey Google, what is 5 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 5 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. I'm getting 33. All right, let's check the hot one again. We're at 168. Let's throw that in there. Hey, Google, what is 168 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? 168 degrees Fahrenheit is 75.556 degrees Celsius. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right around 80 degrees Celsius. I assume that the K-type thermocouple is more accurate than, you know, one of these laser doohickeys. But anyway, the way these work, the, um, the bimetal and the tip, they react to each other, they expand, they contract, and that pressure creates just a tiny little voltage, which can then be amplified, and then you can simply put that into a lookup chart, you know, if you get 1.2 millivolts, that equals so many degrees. All right, let's see how we can send this thing into Fahrenheit. No. 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 All right, millivolts, millivolts, Celsius. I'm going to have to seriously look this up. Okay, some information. When we tested the current, remember, kept uh, overloading? Milliamp is only good to 100 milliamps. So we were at 102. We were just slightly over. Then we come down here to measuring temperature. And how come I didn't see that? Look at that. It's right there. Celsius, Fahrenheit. Go back over the hot water again. All right, so 69C right around 156F. We get 135. I trust a couple thermocouple more. Very cool. All right, guys, that's it for today. I really like this scope meter. I think for now it is going to become my new number one oscilloscope. So you'll be seeing it, not oscilloscope meter. You'll be seeing it in a lot more videos. It works well. And I think it looks good visually on camera. Now, a couple of you guys said on the last video that, uh, you know, Handtech makes one of these. Yeah, they do. It's 200 bucks. I've reviewed them. They're very nice. They're as nice as this. They're about on the same level. But this is 60. There's a 200, you know. Do the math. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. And don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And a big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.